before I actually get into the story itself, I'm inserting my own trigger warning right here because this story triggered me when I skimmed through it when it was first sent to me. And some of you or a lot of you who are listening to the sound of my voice is going to trigger you as well. You're about to actually get a crash course or a glimpse of an example of how systemic white supremacy works. So this man's name is Crossley Green, and he was sentenced to he was given a life sentence. First, he was actually given sentenced to death for a murder in which he did not commit back in 1989. Then it was turned over into a life sentence. And then he ended up being released from prison back in 2021, you know, due to them finding evidence that he was not the person that he, that they were claiming to be. And that right there is systemic in its own right. I mean, how many stories have we heard about with black men spending decades behind bars for crimes they didn't commit? I'm talking about astronomical numbers. Now, the systemic part, that's one part of it. The second part is imagine you're living your life two years, you know, you know, for years free, you know, from the prison system. You, you're getting your life back on track. You, you start you, you ended up meeting a woman, which he did, you know, engaged to be married. And, you know, he has his family he's sending back to only for a judge to give a call, so to speak, to say, Crossley, you have to come back to prison and continue out your sentence. If you wanted to know what systematic white supremacy looked like, you just got a small summary as far as the intro of this video goes, because trust and believe the rest of the story is going to really trigger you even more than you are right now. A Florida, uh, of course, a Florida man who served three decades behind bars for a murder he says he didn't commit returned to prison Monday after spending the past two years building a life outside prison walls. Since his conditional release in 2021 amid appeals, Crossley Green, age 65, had held a job at a machine grafting facility attended church and spent time with his grandchildren he even fell in love i've been with this man for two years his fiance kathy spikes told cnn to not be able to have a five o'clock phone call to say i'm home for me to say what do you want for dinner that's what i'm anxious about his return to prison came about two weeks after u.s district judge roy dalton ruled that he must re he must turn himself in to the authorities by april 17th to resume his life sentence. Green surrendered to Florida's Department of Corrections at 5 p.m. Monday, according to his attorneys. He was accompanied by Spikes, family members, and his lawyers, Keith Harrison and Gene Thomas, who had represented him pro bono for 15 years. Green was allowed to leave prison on conditional release in 2021, about three years after a federal court in Orlando overturned his conviction. The state of Florida appealed that decision in one last year, and Green's conviction was reinstated. Dalton allowed Green to remain free while he exhausted his legal options. Green's legal team petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court, but in late February, the court declined to hear his case. I can't be angry at no one, Green told CNN. I don't want no one else to be angry at no one. Anger isn't going to take you nowhere. Ain't going to do anything but harm you. I'm happy. I'm not happy about going back. I got my future wife. I've got my friends that came up here with me. I've got my family. I don't know about you, but I can't speak for him, but I will speak for myself. Imagine doing going through all of that and having to be told you got to go back. I would be mad as hell. I feel like he's giving a politically correct response here because no one could say with a straight face to me that this would not anger them. I know that this angers the people around him. I know this is angering his fiance. I know this would anger his grandchildren and all of his loved ones. So if they're angry by default, I'm going to be just as as angry even more than they are. But that's just me. Green was convicted in the 1989 shooting death of 21-year-old Charles Flynn. Green, who was black, was sentenced to death by an all-white jury, then resentenced to life in prison in 2009 due to a technicality related to the sentencing phase of his trial. In 2018, Judge Dalton ruled prosecutors had improperly withheld evidence that police at one point suspected someone else was the shooter. But late last year, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals disagreed and reinstated Green's conviction, saying the withheld evidence was not material to the case. 
Green's only options for remaining out of prison are now now are clemency or parole, according to his legal team. We think he's an outstanding candidate for parole, Thomas said. He's demonstrated that in the last two years, he's been under supervised release. He's been an incredibly successful person on the outside with his work, his church, and his family. Thomas has pointed out that clemency is not the same as exoneration. She says it has just a, it's just a mechanism through which the state decides someone has served enough time behind bars to be released. Since his release, Green has worn an ankle monitor and has been a model citizen, according to Thomas. For 15 years now, we have believed wholeheartedly 100% in the innocence of our client, Thomas said. As lawyers, we have to believe that the justice system will get it right. We're going to keep fighting. This is a grave injustice, and we just believe that eventually we will get it right. Despite the latest ruling, Green remains optimistic in his fight to prove his innocence. In a statement shared by his lawyers with CNN, he said, To me, it's just another part of what I'm going through now to get my freedom. That's all it is. He further attributed his perseverance to his faith in comments to CNN. If everyone can just believe in themselves the way I believe in myself with the Lord, then you can understand and say the things that I can say by not letting anything come between you and your faith, he said. <sighs> and to those out there that don't think that systematic uh, white supremacy is a thing, I, I present to you Exhibit A. Like, I don't know what kind of mind state I would be in if I would if I was in his position. Like I said, imagine doing all that time for a crime you didn't commit or you claim that you didn't commit. And then you get released from prison for two years of freedom, quote unquote, not so much freedom because he was wearing an ankle monitor, only to have to hear that you're going to have to go back and resume your sentence. Mind you, he's 65 years old. He went in like 34 years ago. He was in his 30s, early 30s at that. That's I couldn't even imagine and only to hear that you have to go back to finish out your sentencing. So basically what you're saying is he, he's going to have he's going to die in there if they can't get this overturned, which means they have to overturn it again because they already overturned it once. Well, they said he was released on something else, not a complete exoneration. So it's almost like they knew he was going to go back. They just didn't know when. And then, of course, you know what the other st stuff that goes along with it of, you know, the uh, Supreme Court declining every damn thing that didn't help either. Now, watch, hypothetically, say he goes in there, he spends the rest of his days in there, he dies. Then they'll come out and say, oh, by the way, we found something. We found a loophole. He didn't do it all along. Well, well, duh, you been knew he didn't do it all along. You just had to have a black body in that prison system. As usual, I, I swear, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a new day, but it's the same shit. But hopefully his attorney and his team can get this stuff together and taken care of because this is absolutely ridiculous. This is I've heard stories before or done stories before, but I've never I don't think I've ever done a story on my channel where this kind of scenario played itself out to go to jail. For, for to prison, I should say, for all these years for a crime you didn't commit, be out for two years and have to go back and, re and resume your sentence. So you leave your nightmare that you've been your the hell you've been in for the last thirty plus years to have a little taste of freedom, a little just the just the dash of it, to have to go right back to hell again. And this time they might actually find a way to keep you there. That is insane, but hopefully everything pulls through for him the way that it should, and hopefully it remains that way going down the line.